I was 19 years old when this happened to me. I was a sophomore in college, and it was winter break. My parents were busy this Christmas, so my cousin Brody came over to stay with me in my dorm to keep me company. That night, after Brody arrived, we watched some scary videos on YouTube for a little bit, you know, doing random stuff. After a while, my computer died and we got hungry. Brody and I decided to head down to the cafeteria. Unfortunately, there wasn't any food in the cafeteria, so we just decided to go to the nearby 7-Eleven off campus. As we were leaving the room, I noticed an old man sitting at one of the cafeteria tables in the shadowy back corner. He looked tall, creepy, and had bloodshot eyes. But what scared me most of all was how he kept vigorously licking his lips like he was hungry. What he was hungry for exactly, I didn't want to stick around to find out. A few minutes later, my cousin Brody and I pulled up outside of the 7-Eleven. Brody rushed inside the store to get a Slurpee, and I decided to look for something sweet. I walked into the candy aisle, and there was the creepy guy from the cafeteria. He had a crazed smile on his face, and his eyes were wide and unfocused. The man said to me, Hey there, what's your name? After a moment of just standing there in fear of the worst, I ran over to where Brody was trying to get the Slurpee machine to work, because it was broken. I told him about the creepy guy, but he just shrugged it off as a coincidence. Still, I was disturbed, and told Brody I'd go wait in the car for him. As I walked outside to the parking lot, I couldn't shake the feeling that somebody was watching me. Even though I glanced over my shoulder multiple times and didn't see anybody. When I got to my car, I was surprised to find out that the doors were left unlocked. I got in quickly and checked the back seat because someone could have gotten in, but luckily no one was there. I locked the doors and then got a text from Brody, who said he was going to take a while because he had to use the bathroom. I was annoyed that we had to stay in this shady place even longer, but decided to take the time to take a nap. However, after a few minutes, I woke up to a rustling sound behind me. I turned to see the creepy guy sitting in the back seat. As the crazy smile on his face grew even wider, I realized that he had snuck into the trunk because I forgot to lock the doors earlier. We both just sat there because I was paralyzed with fear and couldn't move. After what felt like an eternity, the man pulled out a large rusty knife and let out a deep, creepy laugh. With a scream, I busted out of the car and ran as the man chased after me. Right then, my cousin Brody came out of the store and he was pretty muscular from being an athlete. He was able to knock out the creepy guy. While waiting for the cops to arrive, we decided to wait inside, leaving the man's unconscious body there in the parking lot because it had started to rain. We went inside the 7-Eleven and told the store owner what had happened. All three of us decided to wait by the window, which had fogged up because of the rain outside. The owner quickly wiped it down and what happened next scared the shit out of me. The creepy guy's body was gone. We rushed outside to find him, and the cops arrived exactly then. We told them what had happened, including how the creepy guy was nowhere to be seen. The police searched the 7-Eleven premises and the surrounding woods, and after some time, they found the creepy guy hiding in the trees. They arrested him, and we found out that he was actually a convicted pedophile and murderer on the run who had escaped from a different state penitentiary. Although he was caught, to this day, I wonder what would have happened to me if my cousin Brody hadn't been there to save me. This happened when I was 19. It was May 20th, 1974, and I was a freshman in college. I was studying, and it was about 2.30 a.m., I looked at my roommate, we'll call her Haley, and I said, are you hungry? She nodded. I told her I was going to McDonald's and if she wanted anything. She texted me what she wanted and I left. I was walking to my car when I saw a man standing outside. He was about two years older than me and he was tall and he had dark black hair. When I walked outside, his eyes turned toward me. I didn't know him, but I still said hi. I was walking to my car and he watched me. I was creeped out by this dude so I just got in my car and I drove off. When I got to the fast food place, I went inside to order. As I ordered, I noticed someone was staring at me from outside. I ignored it because I thought it was some homeless guy. When I paid for my food, I left. The guy wasn't there anymore, so I was relieved. I walked to my car and put the food inside. 
when someone grabbed me from behind. They put their hand over my mouth so I couldn't scream. I was kicking, trying to break free, but they were too strong. They pulled me and pushed me into the trunk of their car. I was crying, begging for God to help me. I could only hear one voice in the car, and what I heard frightened me. Okay, Ted, you've done this before. Rape and kill. I felt my stomach drop. I knew I was in a bad situation, but I had planned my escape in my head. When the trunk opened, the same guy I saw outside of my school was right there. He grabbed my arms and he pulled me into the woods. I was making small talk, but I didn't try and irritate him. I told him I didn't know who he was, so I wouldn't tell anyone. He ignored me, but he said, I'm sorry, I don't want to do this, and threw me on the ground. He fell on top of me. I fought him, trying to get him off of me. I grabbed his neck and I kicked him in the balls. He flipped off of me and I ran. I didn't stop running until I saw a telephone booth. I called the cops and they came immediately. The cops searched everywhere, but didn't find him. They didn't find him until 1978. I later learned that my kidnapper was the notorious serial killer Ted Bundy. <laughs> 